I remember when I was 10, I went to this arcade for a friend's birthday party and they had a lock-in and they had all these new games that I could play and I just found myself overwhelmed and some of my friends. Hi, I'm Neil and I'm a gamer. I probably game about 20 to 40 hours a week. When I'm at the arcade, usually over a week, I'll spend maybe five or ten dollars on a few games. Well, I don't really go out of my way to go to an arcade, but like if I'm there and there's a game I want to play, I just you know put in a few dollars and play it. I find the arcade gaming is a lot more appealing because you know it's more instant. You can just put in like a minute or two and you can have fun. Yeah, I think arcades always going to have the nostalgia feel to it. Back in the 80s, you had these games like Pong and Pac-Man where they had really simple graphics and they just had gaming fun in its most rawest form. I found that old, old games had more personality and they were more classic because you didn't find them on the home systems. And these days you can find, you know, all these new games on your PlayStation or your Xbox. Arcades were unique because they had um, these big machines like you had a full aspect ridge racer where you had this MX-5 you'd actually sit in and race. Having these bigger machines just made it more unique than, you know, playing on a cabinet machine. It's different every time you went there. Yeah, I find that games have got a more competitive nature these days. You've got your opponent there, like someone will come up and go, hey, do you want to have a go at this game? And you, you know, you challenge them and then shake hands afterwards and it's all good. Back in the 90s, you'd have this high score table on the game where, you know, you'd aim to get this high score. You wouldn't know who the person was, but you'd just aim at beating their high score. These days with Tekken and Soul Calibur, you've got their character data and it kind of adds a bit more personality to it. I find that home gaming is more rewarding because you've got you know, this decent plot line and stuff to unlock, new characters, and then you don't have to waste like an hour or two getting your friends to like meet up in an arcade, instead you can just do it at home. To improve the future of arcade games, they need to move away from this, you know, games that you'd see on you know, home consoles and maybe have like a more rewarding unlock thing where you might be able to customise your character a bit more something bringing you back every time. Maybe then the arcades will start to, you know, go back to their old state. I hope arcades stick around because I'd enjoy taking my kids to, you know, experience what I experienced. Hi, I'm John and I'm 43 years old and I'm addicted to pinballs. I've been collecting pinballs for the last 20 years. How many machines have I had? I, I guess I can only say um, in the hundreds. The appeal in pinballs, I think it's, it's the artwork, it's the lights, it's the music. It's, it's all of that in one that just, it's just an attractive package. It's to look at, to play, it's, they're just a beautiful machine to look at. When you stand in front of a machine and press the flippers, it's, it's a real physical thing to, 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 to move the ball around. It's, 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 it's just a, a good experience, but when it's a digital ball, I don't think so. I guess at the end of the day, you know, a pinball machine is something that, I don't know, is, is fairly unique. You know, all other games can be reproduced. Pinball machines and, and that 90s era is, is hard to reproduce. You know, and uh, it's just remained, you know, that that classic type of pinball, and everybody wants them. Back in the 90s, I think, you know, we would walk into an arcade with 20 bucks, and we'd be there all day, um, and give the machine a good old thrashing and keep us entertained. All these arcades, they were sort of, I don't know, maybe attracting the wrong crowds and things like that. So, I don't know, people like to go home and play the games at home and, and be comfortable in their own sort of you know, surroundings. I've had a lot of machines over the years and of course I can't keep them all because it's too expensive. So every now and again you have to let some go. It's just great to sort of bring them in, play them, restore them, uh, play them again and then pass it on. Machines nowadays are just feeling tinnier, the plastics are thinner and you know, even the, you know, the back glasses are, you know, the lights behind are replaced with fluoros. I mean, the globes make a difference. It's just everything about it nowadays it just feels different. If you put a brand new Stern and you put an Adams Family, the Adams Family will have more money in it because it's just an, uh, it just has that attract factor. And if you don't have that, you ain't going to make money. I don't know. I think nowadays they're just made differently, and I think everyone's a big fan of 
The machine's in the 80s and 90s, so I think the only place you'll find them now is at home. Hi, I'm Simon. Uh, I'm the director of Amusement Works. Uh, my first experience within the arcade industry was uh, a, a, basically a coin jockey at uh, local arcades. Since then I have uh, grown to a greater passion from being just a, a, an average collector and a player to now being the director of Amusement Works. At Amusement Works my core business is actually uh, operator based, wholesale and the support of arcades throughout South Australia. Back in the late 80s there's uh, one operator that particularly comes to mind and he would constantly brag to me. He was able to make his first million in the first 14 days of running a very large arcade here in Adelaide. And he too also started out as a coin jockey. This industry is contagious. Anyone who's played a game and has found the passion of wanting to own one, it never seems to go away. I have numerous collectors which come to me, which will proudly boast that they have you know, 30, maybe 50, 60 machines sitting at home, which is better than most arcades that you are seeing here in Adelaide. Without the collectors, I'm not able to get rid of my trade-ins so that the operators can afford to buy into new product. At Amusement Works, we hold a yearly auction. This is where we are able to offer collectors and operators an opportunity to be able to bring their machines in and put them up for auction. It gives them a terrific opportunity for collectors and also operators alike to maybe buy that uh, second or third machine. It enables a lot of people to see 40 to 50 pinball machines on offer for them to actually come in and play on free play and enjoy, I believe, the best arcade I can put together. By holding the auctions, we also see a lot of new blood which is coming in. This enables us to introduce some of the classic games back into the home market. We cannot believe we're fitting games that were developed over 20 years ago today. We're finding that a lot of the arcades that since the late 90s, a lot of them are now becoming away from that dirty, dark, dingy pinball parlour that they have always been labelled. They're now becoming more family orientated. In, within the trade, we call them FECs, Family Entertainment Centres. Why do people play games? This has always intrigued me. Is it the colour? Is it the flashing white? Is it, what is it? I believe it's the interaction. I do believe it's the attraction of the game. Everyone loves that challenge. Everyone loves to beat a high score. I hope to be within this industry for the next 10 to 15 years and I, and I plan on actually opening one of my own centres and developing this further because I am a true believer that this industry has still got it.